This program is made possible by Zoho Corporation. Hello and welcome. I'm Kamla. My guest today is Nachiketa Yakundi. He's an engineer at Oracle and a teacher at his own music academy called Raj Guru Sangeet Vidyaniketan School of Music, which is located right here in Silicon Valley. So welcome to the show, Nachiketa. Thank you, Kamla. You go by the short name Nachi. Yes, Okay. I do. So since you are a uh, exponent of Hindustani classical music, which is one of the two strands of Indian classical music, for someone who has never heard Hindustani classical music, how would you describe it? It is ancient, it is complex, it is evolved, and it is absolutely fascinating. How is it different from Western uh, classical music? It's a different style, different school of music. But that's it, also ancient, that's also complex, exactly, that's also evolved. It's just different. So um, Hindustani uh, and Carnatic, the two schools of Indian classical music, are very, they're joined at the hip. Um, they are um, governed by very strict rules. Uh, at the same time, they have room for tremendous interpretation. So just like jazz? Something like that, yeah. Improvisation. Yeah, very, impro very improvisational, yes. Okay. So can you give us an example of something that you would have improvised on? So you learnt a raga, for instance. Yeah. How would you then put your spin on it as... Uh, uh, you know, as in, in terms of improvising it. Yeah, so an example I can, I'll, I'll demonstrate by example. So there's a rag called Yaman, one of my favorite, all-time favorite rags and favorites of many others. Um, the basic structure of the rag, Nerega, Rega Mapa, Gama dhani sa sa ni pa ma pa pa re ga re ga ma pa re sa This is just a um, sort of a walkthrough going up and down the scale um, with keeping in mind the rules of the rag. So my interpretation would be a little bit on the side of um, uh, keeping the ma. The ma note. The, the ma note, the ma note, um, almost as important as the ga and the pa notes, but not quite. Many others think of ma as um, important, but not nearly as important. It's, it's a level of importance. So I would do something like this. That would be one way of interpreting the rag. So you um, emphasize the ma. Emphasize the ma, but keep it a little less important than ga and pa. Mm. Okay. How did you get interested in uh, music? My parents. Absolutely my parents. They, um, my, my mother was a Bharatanatyam dancer. She was an actress. She Actress in what? In movies, in, on, on stage, on, in, as recently as 2005 in uh, TV serials in, in, in India, in Bangalore. So the artistic side of uh, my music, at least, comes from her side. Okay. Uh, my father was an absolute um, he, 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 uh, encourager, um, and he was uh, very much uh, of the belief that um, music and um, academia have to go hand in hand. So why did so, you become a musician? Why did you become an engineer? So I figured, uh, <laughs> that's a good question. I figured that um, I could pursue music more passionately if it, not, if it were not um, my livelihood. In the sense that I could do music for the sake of music and not have to worry about my next meal. 
So music was not your meal ticket? Correct. Okay. But why have you continued to be an engineer after 22 years of being an engineer? You can, you can now give it, give it up and pursue music full time. I can. I, I'm, I might even do that uh, in, the, in the not so distant future because that would be absolutely fantastic that where I don't have to worry about my next payment or my next uh, meal. Um, if, if, that, if I had that kind of situation, yes, absolutely, I would do that in a heartbeat. But I'm not there yet. <laughs> so who, who uh, encouraged you to do engineering? My father. Was he an engineer? Yeah, he was an engineer also. He's an engineer. He was on the mechanical industrial side. I'm more on the computer side. Okay, so you grew up in a family where there was the creative side and then there was the engineering the side. Engineering side, correct. Okay. Correct. Did you at any time, you know, forget the livelihood and everything, but did you at any time seriously think of embracing music as your full-time profession? Yes, actually I did. In fact, my guru, Pandit Basavraj Rajguru, uh, under whom I learned uh, for almost 10 years and from whom I got the, the, the most intense training that I have received, was very much of that uh, opinion that I should just quit everything, my, my school, my studies, my pursuit of a career in engineering or computer science or whatever, and do music full time. Um, because he, he, he thought that I would be able to do that. You would be able to cut it? I would be able to cut it. But why but didn't you? I wasn't, I was not brave enough, I think. Mm. I, I, I know about the, 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 the struggles and the, the, the trials and tribulations that he had gone through himself. And uh, having achieved the level that he did after so many decades, I didn't want to I think I was a little chicken there. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go back to the hometown where you grew up, your hometown, Dharwad, Dharwad. which is like Mississippi, you know, home of Delta Blues or the Appalachian Mountains for country sure, music. Sure, so sure. Dharwad is like uh, the uh, home ground. Oh, for, yeah. For, for, I would call it the cradle of Hindustani music. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's one good way to put it because a uh, lot of uh, well-known singers mm -hmm. uh, called the Harvard their home. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, uh, my guru, Pandit Basavaraj Rajguru, Bhim Sen Joshi, Gangubai Hangal, Malikarjun Mansur, Kumar Gandharv, Sawai Gandharv, um, Abdul Karim Khan was not so far from Dharwad. Uh, the, the, uh, there were a lot of instrumentalists, Chote Rehmat Khan, uh, a whole lot of musicians who came from that area, the Dharwad and its neighboring Gadag and Hubli and Kundgol and these, these areas. In the state of Karnataka. In the state of, yeah, in the northern part of the state. That is the southern state of Karnataka, but on the northern, northern part. Correct, okay. correct. Uh, so what was it like? If, so if you were to go out, if I was to go to the Dharwad today, what would it be like? Would, would there be music coming out in the evenings from every home or a particular uh, street? Interesting you should mention that. I was in Dharwad in 2013 and I went there after a very long time because my parents and pretty much everybody else is in Bangalore. So um, when, I went, when I go to Dharwad, I go for short visits. So when I went in 2013, I wasn't expecting the old Dharwad that I grew up in in the, in the 1980s where there was really, like you said, music coming out of everywhere. You would walk, take a small walk in a small street and you would hear music. You, you would either hear somebody singing, practicing, performing, or you would hear something blaring. And not the Hindi uh, movie songs, but... Not the I mean, Bollywood songs. Not, yeah, but the hardcore classical. Um, so I was not expecting that in 2013, but I did. I did hear... I, I took a walk in my, my, my usual route that I used to take uh, 30 years previously, and there was music. There's, and Dharwad is still brimming with music. Mm. So why did you choose uh, your guru as Basava Raju? Because I read the essay that you wrote, remembering him and how he passed away. He was a very tough uh, teacher. Tough, but um, not unreasonable. Um, very, um, very reasonable, very kind, but tough in the sense he would not let go until you got 
what he had in mind for you. So what did he see in you? I think, and um, I think I'm okay to say this, um, I think he saw some potential in me. I think more than anything he saw dedication. And the fact that I would really pursue this and not just because it was my f passing fancy. So I think he saw that and he saw that I would um, pick up things that he would uh, demonstrate and sing for to me. Uh, and I would go back and practice and uh, show him what I had done. And he thought that I had, I had that spark in me. And so I was fortunate. So when he was passing away, you know, you were on the verge of bringing him to America mm -hmm. for his first trip. Correct. But then Correct. he suffered a heart attack. Correct. And I think his parting words were, bring the tampura and sing sa. Yeah. Why I, is sa so important in uh, Hindustani music? Yeah, so, uh, by the way, I was there when he breathed his last. Yeah. I, I was sitting right next to him um, in that, that, on that fateful night, the 21st of July, 1991, in St. Martha's Hospital in Bangalore. Um, just a few moments before that, he motioned to me to bring the tanpura, which is the drone instrument that really is the basis for, it sets the, it's a home base. It sets the key for the performance or the song or the rag that you're singing. So when you say, uh, hold the sa, it means the sa now is the establishment of the home, the home base. So every note now becomes relative to that sa. So can you give me so an example? I was singing the Yaman, Yaman scale earlier. The sa that I was using there is sa. Now, ni re ga, re ga ma pa, pa re sa. So once I've established the sa, everything is now relative to the sa. So when, when he said, hold the sa for me, it means let's get started. Let's establish what we have to sing and go forward from there. And so the way to do that is to really tune the tanpura to an existing sa. And, and that typically that existing sa comes from a harmonium where there is a set frequency. Mm. Uh, because the tanpura is a stringed instrument that can vary in frequency. Mm. So even in his uh, uh, dying, days. dying day, dying moments, mm. uh, he was thinking of the sa. He was thinking of, and he was thinking of, uh, when he saw me, the first thing that came to his mind is, maybe this guy has come to learn from me. And so I must teach him. So get the sa out, I'll teach you bihag. Bihag is another rag, by the way. Okay. And, yeah. So what was your... Uh, uh, you know, what was his reaction, your singing teacher's reaction, when after you finished your 12th grade, you came to America? Yes. Which is unusual, especially yes. from a small town like Dharwad, right? Yes, yes. Uh, because usually kids from metro cities tend to Correct. go. Correct, correct. And um, not only that, it was unusual, at least at that time, for anybody to come to the U.S. for an undergraduate degree. And why did you come? <laughs> but let's first find out about what your teacher had to say. He was devastated. He was, he was heartbroken uh, when he heard that not only was I not going to pursue music full time, I was leaving. I was leaving him. I was leaving the country. How am I going to carry on? How am I going to pursue? How am I going to live his dreams? Right? That was, it was, it was very... Um, very disappointing for him, I think. And at that moment, I did not realize it as much as I do today, for mm. example. Uh, okay, looking back. Uh, looking back. So how did you come here? Um, so my, my uncle uh, is a, was a physician in Ohio. Um, and uh, he was very close to me. And uh, I've, he's known me from my childhood. Um, so he, uh, he had been telling my father, he'd, and my father really wanted me to pursue uh, my higher studies in the US, especially in computer science, which was quite an emerging field at that time. And um, 
so between themselves, they talked about uh, having me come here. And my uncle was kind enough to sponsor me uh, to come here. And because um, he lived in Ohio, I figured, uh, why not go to a school in Ohio? So you went so, to a small liberal school in Ohio. Exactly. It's a liberal arts school called, it was then called Mount Union College. It's now University of Mount Union. Okay. So, and this is in a small town called Alliance. Alliance, Ohio. It's, okay. uh, it's in uh, Stark County in northeastern Ohio. Yeah, so I was looking up Alliance, Ohio, and it's, it's famous for uh, railroads and red carnation. Carnations, yes, in, indeed. I mean, there's a carnation parade that happens every year there. The, the big mall there is the Carnation Mall. Uh, and really every uh, festive occasion at Mount Union uh, involves, or really Alliance for that matter, involves carnations. What was it like, you know, 24, 25 years ago, you come from Dharwad and you go straight to Alliance, Ohio. <laughs> How did you arrive at Alliance, Ohio? What was that journey like? Yeah, so um, before, uh, uh, right, uh, right, I should say right after Dharwad, I, I lived in Bangalore for a, for a little less than two years, um, which was, which was, it was great for me in one sense because I was finally living with my parents. In, in Dharwad, I used to live with my grandfather and uncle. So living with my parents, coming back to them was great. But Bangalore really didn't suit me so well. Um, but coming to the U.S. and uh, I, I arrived in New York actually at, at JFK and I was just wowed and uh, which fascinated. Airlines? Uh, it was Pan Am. Which okay. was an airline still prevalent at that time. <laughs> did you order vegetarian food? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and did they give you uh, they raw actually, veggies? They, no, no, <laughs> actually they gave me an Indian meal that happened to be vegetarian. Um, <laughs> but it was, a, it was a very fascinating journey. I was, I was a wreck. I was a nervous wreck because I didn't know what to do. I saw a, quite a few other Indian students on the plane who are all coming for the graduate studies. So I could not really relate to any one of them uh, as to their experiences and their expectations. So, and when I came to the airport at New York, um, the, the officer asked me to present the packet that I had been carrying with me. One I I My I I-120, I-20 form. Yeah. And um, he, uh, he said something I did not understand. Maybe the accent just threw me off or maybe I was just a nervous wreck. So I just <laughs> stared at him. <laughs> he had to repeat himself. <laughs> uh, uh, fortunately for me, he was a patient man. Um, so I handed over the paper and then he said, you're all set. I was expecting uh, to be detained and interrogated and questioned and nothing like that happened. Because this was pre-internet. <laughs> yes. You had no case, had, you, you no, had, had no used cases. Exactly. I had, <laughs> <laughs> I had no social media <laughs> to, <laughs> yeah. Not like Shah Rukh Khan yeah. saying he was detained. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, so I, I, I came out of the, uh, the JFK. The JFK and my uncle was there. He had come all the way from Ohio to New York to greet me. And that was fantastic. I, so I... Um, Went by road to Ohio? No, I flew from New York to Cleveland. And then uh, from Cleveland, he, he lived a little east of Cleveland and uh, in a uh, town called Painesville. So I had known all about this, by the way. I mean, I kn had read all about this, but when actually seeing these towns in person was, was, was amazing. So was it disorienting for you to come from uh, India to Ohio? Yes, it was. Um, it, was uh, th it was a mix of curiosity, uh, nervousness, anxiety, and the fact that in a few days I was going to actually start college. And you uh, lived in the dorm? Uh, yes, I lived in the dorm. How did you handle food? Because that's one of the first things that people kind of yeah, miss. Yeah, I, I'm a vegetarian and uh, I was then also, of course. Um, so the first thing that I noticed that really the only thing vegetarian that I noticed in the, uh, in the cafeteria was uh, buttered rice and tomato soup. Uh, to me, that sounded like uh, sadam and rasam. And, rice and uh, rasam. Rice, rice and rasam. So, uh, anna saru mm. in, in what we call in Kannada in my language. Um, so, that was about as close as I got um, to vegetarian food. And there was a deli uh, that had 
bread and cheese slices and tomato slices and that lasted me for all of three days maybe <laughs> and then there was ice cream <laughs> so <laughs> so these three meals made up my made up my staple food um, and then I started talking to the food director uh, the director of the cafeteria to try to include vegetarian items when they made for example burritos all they would have is ground beef burritos so I'd say how about you know bean burritos or because I had by then sort of acclimatized to the fact that there is some vegetarian food still available and then there was pizza and uh, almost all pizza had pepperoni in it, on it so I said how about just you know plain cheese pizza and things like that and slowly I started to 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 really know that there is. It still causes problems for you, thinking back. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Not so much as problem, problem, but it was more nostalgic. How did I ever manage? To <laughs> we do. I, yeah, you know, yeah. We, we all do. Then from, you, you, so you studied computer sciences mm -hmm. for undergrad, and then you went to another small town liberal college, but this time in Virginia. Correct. What is the fascination with small towns and liberal schools? <laughs> uh, in this time, it was uh, a free ride. So uh, after I graduated from Mount Union, um, I applied to many different grad schools for my master's program. And uh, I did get into many schools, but not everybody gave me a tuition waiver or a scholarship or an assistantship. Radford did. Radford University, in, and the, the program they called at that time was called Computational Sciences, which is a combination of computer science, mathematics, and statistics. So that was uh, itself fascinating, and the fact that they gave me a tuition waiver and an assistantship, I was sold. And I, I, I had never traveled south of uh, <laughs> uh, Ohio, really. Uh, I had for a few trips here and there, but when I came to Virginia, I was just, I was, I was wowed by, this time for a different reason, by just the sheer nature. It was so beautiful there. So did you discover country music in Virginia? Actually, no. In, um, in Ohio, my, at Mount Union, my good, good friend and my, and my roommate, Bob Tubo, um, was a country music lover. And so he introduced me to country music when we were roommates. To and old Scruggs and all of that. All those guys. But more, at that time, more contemporary country music, like Garth Brooks and Brooks and Dunn and uh, uh, Carlene Carter and those people. Um, so when I came to Virginia, I was at home. <laughs> And then what brought you to Silicon Valley? Um, well, the prospects of uh, a good career in computer science, really. And I knew that coming to California would be uh, the best thing to do. And uh, a, a very good friend of mine, John Azariah, uh, was at uh, Oracle at that time. And uh, he pushed my resume around. And next thing I know, I landed an interview, and I was here. You're probably one of the few people in Silicon Valley who have stuck with the same company. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I tried to move, but I was sucked back in. <laughs> so you've been with Oracle for almost 22 years. Yes, yes. And why did you start the music uh, school? So, um, a little bit of a, uh, an extended background. So when I came here to the US, I, I had no intention whatsoever of quitting music. In fa if anything, my, my interest and passion for music had grown. Um, absence makes the heart grow fonder kind of thing. So I used to practice on, on almost a daily basis. And I, uh, Dr. Phelps of the music department at Mount Union had great interest in non-Western music. And uh, when he knew that, and he came to know that I knew Indian music, uh, he was fascinated. And so we had a lot of discussions. He, in fact, had me give a lot of lecture demonstrations in his class. And so ever since then, my interest in music kept growing. My discoveries kept growing. And I was um, ever so proud that I had not only not given up music, but I had made my guru proud. Um, and hopefully, I'd hopefully not disappointed him too much. Mm. And so when I came here with the musical activity, with the people, with the interest among the people here, I figured this is, uh, this is a great opportunity for me to grow even more. Mm. And then my father encouraged me to, uh, to start a school. And on April 17th, 1999, 
Rajguru Sangeet Vidya Niketan was born. Where here in in, Cooper, in Sunnyvale. In Sunnyvale. In Sunnyvale. Okay. Uh, we have two minutes left. I want to talk to you about your involvement with uh, Natak, which is uh, the local Bay Area theatre group, and it's probably one of the oldest theatre groups in America. Mm -hmm. You've been involved with them for a few years. How did your involvement with Natak happen? Um, I have known Sujit for quite a while. He is one of the Sujit founders. Sujit Saraf is one of the founders of Natak. Um, uh, he and I, we met a long time ago in Massachusetts, uh, and then after he moved Why here, Massachusetts? He was at UMass. Oh, I thought he was studying in Berkeley. He studied before that, he was at UMass, and I met him through a common friend, and um, uh, he probably doesn't remember that uh, <laughs> meeting, but I do. And uh, when he came here, or, or he came here earlier than I, a year or two earlier than I did, and then when I came here, we, we sort of crossed paths a few times, and then, um, a few years ago, um, I did a little bit of uh, a background music score for uh, Mowgli and I, uh, One of a, their a, plays. a Natak production. And uh, since then, I was becoming more and more involved. And I was, of course, I have been watching the their plays all along. And I was, terrific work these guys do. And so uh, when Sujit uh, asked me in 2014, or 2013, uh, if I could uh, direct music for an upcoming musical in fall 2014 called Amavasya, I just just jumped on that opportunity. And uh, so Amavasya happened in 2014, uh, and it was a fantastic experience. And then the following year, Vrindavan happened, and uh, this year it's Mr. India. Well, so you've kept your uh, interest in music alive. Yes, absolutely. One way or the other. One way or the other. You know, Nachi, thank you so much for talking to thank us you. and for giving us a little bit of a lecture demonstration <laughs> on what a raga is. Thank you, thank you. Kamala. You know, and thank you for watching. We'll be back again with another edition of our show. And in case you missed any of our shows, you can watch them on our YouTube channel. This program is made possible by Zoho Corporation.